Hi everybody, this is Chandler and Karen and we're here to do Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Now this chapter is a great chapter because it's all about faith and us as believers we need faith in our everyday life. We need faith when we're praying. We need faith when we wake up in the morning and just believe in God that he will be with us and protect us every single day. We need faith just for about everything. It even says in the Bible that we need faith to please God and I just want to read the first verse to you guys because it is just the definition of faith itself in case any of us are wondering now faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen this verse is a very famous verse and <laughs> this is the backbone of this entire chapter now I also want to read this verse to you all by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God so that the things which are seen we're not made of things which are visible. Now, this is also um, a, a very important verse because it talks about basically how the world was even created. And there's many different doctrines and ideologies and theories. We have evolution, the Big Bang Theory, but us as believers, we have faith. And we believe that God created the earth. And even though we didn't see him do it, we know by faith that he did do it. Now, also in this chapter, a couple verses down, it talks about Noah. And Noah is a man who had extreme faith because he built the ark. He built an ark and he had to have strong faith to believe that it was actually going to rain, that the world was going to be destroyed. How many of us will really do that today? Build an ark or just some, something God has really asked us, to, asked us to do something that we may be uncomfortable with? Maybe sometime God even asks us to go speak to someone. We have to have faith to go talk to them, to prophesy to them. But some of us, maybe I'm talking about myself. I don't want to talk about anybody else. Sometimes it's hard to do those things, and you have to have faith for that. Now, also a man of strong faith was Abraham. He was the father of many nations, but he didn't get to see all these nations because he died. But he had faith, and he believed that God would... Get it popping between him and Sarah, even though they were old. They were old. And that takes a lot of faith to think that I'm almost dead and I'm going to have hundreds of children. But he did because we're here today. Now, let's talk about the heavenly hope. Now, in verse 13, it says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, assured of them, embrace them, and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims of the earth. I love the last part where it says about how they were strangers and pilgrims of the earth. They confessed it. They believed it because they knew that this temporary state, this temporary world they're in, is not permanent. They knew that they had something better to look forward to, and they were seeking a homeland, somewhere better, a heavenly hope. It also says that, but now they desire a heavenly country. And so they knew that this was their temporary home. They knew that there was something better. And that was heaven. And to have a faith that way, knowing that this terrible earth that I'm on right now is not my permanent home, that some, there's something better up in the heavens for me. It's, it is very touching to me. It's very touching. Now, the last person who I want to speak about who had tremendous faith was even Isaac allowing himself to lay down and be killed by his father. <laughs> I don't think Isaac really had a choice in that matter. Well, he didn't lay down to be killed by his father. Let's not say that, but Abraham had the great faith. Abraham <clears throat> had the faith to kill his son, but his son, he had to lay down. He could have fought his dad. He could be like, no. He could have pulled a knife on him, but he was humble and he laid down. He was humble and he laid down and allowed his father to possibly kill him. And that took faith in knowing that God would bless him. But we all know in the end that he did not have to die. And that pretty much sums up the first 20 verses of this chapter. And I'm going to pass it on to Chandler, who also has a lot of insight and has been a great partner. That was an excellent summary, Karen. Thank you, Channy. Um, um, 
verses 23 to 20, through 29 are all about Moses. We all know the story of Moses. Um, I'm not going to go too in depth on that, but it is important to state that it was his faith that sustained him through all the trials and tribulations that he suffered through in Egypt. Um, the author stops about when he actually, actually led the exodus through um, from Egypt through the uh, Red Sea and that it was his faith in God that allowed he and his feather, fellow Jews to escape the Egyptians who, you know, of course, drowned in the Red Sea. Um, verses 30 through 35 discuss other instances in which faith was a catalyst for many different miracles, the, the walls of Jericho falling down, the spies being, you know, getting into the city um, of, um, you know, that one city. I never actually read that story, <laughs> but um, I've heard about it. Um, after verse 35, verses 36 through 38, his tone changes a little bit. He stops talking so much about the victories that were achieved through faith and more about some of the, the, the sufferings and things that were endured because of it. So he talks about people being tortured, imprisoned, tempted, sawn in half, slain by the sword, and in all these situations, he states that it was, you know, their faith that kept them and sustained them. Not for victory, like some of the other situations. It didn't always lead to victory. You know, death, it doesn't seem so, so much as a victory to me, but he does state that um, in verse 39, I'll read it to you. It says, And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. Now, I'm going to get into the promise in a second, but it seems like to me that the fact that they were able to receive a good testimony because of their faith is a reward in itself. The fact that they can testify, those who survived can testify about what they went through and what God brought them through. That seems like a reward in and of itself. Now, to the part where it says they did not receive the promise. <clears throat> Notice that he says the promise. Earlier he says that um, in verse 13, he says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims of the earth. These two are totally different promises, I believe. I believe that the promises he is, the promise he's referring to here is the salvation through Jesus Christ. I believe this because of what he states in the final verse, verse 40. He states that God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So I believe the promise he's referring to was that was them being made perfect. And of course, we are all born sinners. And without the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ, it is impossible for us to be perfect. So, this has led me to believe that the promise he's talking about is the redemption of Jesus Christ. I mean, not the redemption of Jesus, redemption of us through Jesus Christ. That is the promise he is referring to. Cut. <laughs> <laughs>